Atoms can react with each other in a variety of ways. The type of bond they form when they meet depends on the forces of attraction and the forces of repulsion between the nuclei and the electrons. If the forces of attraction and repulsion balance when the electron orbitals overlap, the atoms form stable bonds. But when other atoms, such as helium, are at a distance, where their orbitals come into contact, the forces of repulsion are greater than the forces of attraction. So there is no tendency for the atoms to stay together. Atoms which behave this way form a family of elements in the periodic table. Their electron arrangement is significant. All of these have their s orbitals filled and their p orbitals filled. When other atoms bond together, they try to achieve these configurations. For example, the reaction between two hydrogen atoms results in a bond in which the atoms share their electrons. Each atom now has an electron arrangement similar to that of the inert gas helium and the bond between them is referred to as a covalent bond. On the other hand, when sodium reacts with chlorine, it gives up one electron. The loss of an electron leaves sodium with a full 2p orbital and the same electron arrangement as the noble gas, neon. While the chlorine ion gains an electron, to produce the very same arrangement as argon. The electrostatic attraction between them is called an ionic bond. What if one chlorine atom encounters another chlorine atom? How would they react? Each chlorine atom has a strong attraction for its own electrons. Each atom requires one additional electron to achieve the electron configuration of argon. The chlorine atoms achieve this by sharing one pair of electrons, forming a diatomic molecule of chlorine. Consider two oxygen atoms. We find that each atom must gain two electrons to acquire the electron configuration of neon. The oxygen atoms achieve this by sharing two pairs of electrons between them. This produces a diatomic molecule of oxygen held together by a double covalent bond. Two atoms of nitrogen will also form a bond. But each nitrogen atom requires three electrons to acquire the electron configuration of the nearest inert gas, neon. This can be achieved by sharing three pairs of electrons. The result is a diatomic molecule of nitrogen. The relative strength of a triple covalent bond compared with that of a double covalent bond or a single covalent bond can be illustrated by comparing the way these substances react with hydrogen. A mixture of hydrogen and chlorine requires very little energy to initiate a reaction nothing more than a flash of bright light provides enough energy to break the single covalent bonds of some chlorine and hydrogen molecules. Since diatomic molecules of oxygen have a double covalent bond, more energy is required to break the bond. A flash of bright light will not trigger the reaction. However, a small spark of static electricity will result in the breaking of the double covalent bonds of oxygen. Diatomic molecules of nitrogen with their triple bonds will not react when exposed to light or electrical sparks, but only when heated and placed under pressure. 
Even then, the reaction isn't explosive. Let's have another look at the reaction between chlorine and hydrogen. The product of the reaction is hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen needs one electron to form the electron configuration of helium, and chlorine needs one electron to form the electron configuration of argon. As a result, a single covalent bond forms between them. The chlorine atom has a stronger attraction for electrons than the hydrogen atom. As a result, the shared pair of electrons spends more time near the chlorine nucleus than the hydrogen nucleus. This produces a slightly positive charge on one end and a slightly negative charge on the other end of the molecule. In one sense, the bond is covalent because an electron pair is being shared. But in another sense, the bond is ionic because the molecule has a positive and a negative end. Such a bond produces what is called a polar molecule. The polar molecules of hydrogen chloride exert fairly strong forces of attraction on each other causing them to have higher boiling and melting points than non-polar molecules of similar size. When one nucleus exerts a stronger attraction than the other, a polar molecule may result. But it doesn't always happen this way. Carbon, as an example, needs four electrons to acquire the electron configuration of the noble gas neon. The atom is often in an excited state when it reacts, which means that one of the 2s electrons moves to a 2p orbital. The carbon atom can then form single covalent bonds with each of the four atoms of hydrogen. With carbon at the middle, the actual shape of the bonding arrangement is a tetrahedron. Since carbon atoms can form bonds with each other, as well as with hydrogen, an endless number of hydrocarbon compounds are possible. Even though these hydrocarbons are all non-polar, there are still small forces of attraction between them. The larger these molecules are, the larger the attractive forces. The strength of the attraction has a direct bearing on their melting and boiling points. Methane, a small molecule with small attractive forces, boils at a very low temperature. Larger pentane molecules with greater attractive forces between them boil at a much higher temperature. Carbon also has the ability to form covalent bonds exclusively with other carbon atoms to form diamond. The entire crystal forms a giant molecule and is referred to as a covalent crystal. Understanding how atoms bond enables us to predict many of the properties of the molecules they form.